I'm Racer Magazine's Marshall Pruitt. Let's take a look inside IMSA's fascinating new hybrid GTP cars. The next in our GTP 101 tech video series features Porsche's 963. As the most successful manufacturer in the history of sports car racing, should come as no surprise that Porsche was the first automaker to commit to the GTP regulations and to hit the track with the 963 more than one year ago, long before Acura, BMW, or Cadillac broke cover with their hybrid prototypes. Set to make its global endurance racing debut at the Rolex 24 at Daytona, the 963 is a factory bloodline that traces back to the event's early days. 55 years ago, the works Porsche 907 LH captured the first of 18 overall victories for Porsche at Daytona. The hybrid 963 follows the all-conquering Porsche 919 hybrid, the fearsome LMP1 machine from Vysok that won three straight FIA World Endurance Championship titles on an international stage and three consecutive overall victories the 24 hours of Le Mans. Turn our attention to the 963's most recent factory relative in North America. The LMP2 based hybrid has deep roots with the Porsche RS Spiders that blitz the American Le Mans series. The trio of LMP2 titles from 2006 through 2008 where its primary rival just happened to be one of its main GTP protagonists in Acura. The 963 is a byproduct of a collaboration forged between Porsche Motorsport in Germany and Canada's Multimatic, which earned universal accolades for the design, performance, and looks of its most recent prototype, Mazda's Sublime RT24-P DPI. For one final time in our tech tours, the 963 chassis is made from carbon fiber, with machined alloy bulkheads affixed in critical areas that provide incredible torsional stiffness which also aid in the on-track performance of the car. There's no single aspect of the Porsche's appearance that stands out from the other GTP models. There was an effort early on to suggest the 963's nose bears a resemblance to the legendary Porsche 962 that dominated IMSA's GTP class in the 1980s, but there's nothing there. What can't be argued is the influence of Multimatics designers and Porsche's designers who've conjured something special with the flowing shapes and curves that make the 963 a real vision of beauty to behold. The Porsche's nose is broad and uniform. The 963 could be mistaken for smiling at the cars it's hunting. Unlike the rest of the GTP cars, the 963's brake ducts are tucked within the left and right portions of that rectangular grin. Where the Acuras, BMWs, and Cadillacs position their headlights in a vertical manner at the outer edges of their noses, directly in front of the tires within those tall fender structures, Porsche has taken a really interesting approach with its fender and lighting layout. The most obvious difference to the other GTP cars is the horizontal installation of the Porsche's headlights. But that's just the start of the 963's radical design variation. The big change here is found with the lack of the tall and protruding fenders that meet the oncoming air near the leading edge of the nose. By removing the headlights from the fenders and laying them flat across the nose, Porsche has eliminated the need for something large and tall to carry those lights. And with that puzzle solved, the 963 features the lowest and most aerodynamically friendly front fender design in GTP. There's one more aspect of the nose to identify, and that's the pair of cooling ducts for the headlights. In yet another bespoke solution for the 963, Porsche has moved the small but sizable ducts away from the headlights to a slightly inward position to capture and send air through to those red-hot lighting assemblies. Switching to the flanks of the 963, Porsche and Multimatic went in yet another significant direction of their own, with the side pod treatments on their hybrid prototype. At Acura, choices were made to pull air from over and under the nose through channels built into the ARX-06's side pods and behind the front tires. And with the Dallara built BMW M Hybrid V8s and Cadillac's V LMDHs, the same air is being routed through channels at the base of the side pods and atop the rear of their front tires. The Porsche 963 does none of the above. The rear of its front fenders are closed and there's no channel carved into a long and square side pod because Porsche has gone with an open wheel side pod just like you'll find in IndyCar, and that's fed by an expansive valley. 
been created between the front wheels and the 963's tub. The air flowing through the big passage fires into the side pods to cool the engine. That air also gets routed around to reattach with the air running along the sides of the car. Ducking into the 963's cockpit with the hip-hop loving Michael Christensen. It's a standard affair, as we've seen in the other three GTP models, with an abundance of safety equipment and electronics. But one item's worth noting, and that's the driver's drink bottle system, which sits in the cylinder shown here and has its drinking tube, which connects to their helmets. Fresh bottles with personalized drink choices of each driver are swapped in and out during those driver changes. Following to the rear of the Porsche, we see a piece of history wrapped in the most exclusive packaging in the GTP class. The 963 utilizes the original LMP2 RS Spider engine, which won all of those LMS championships and the LMP2 class at Le Mans with a 3.4 liter naturally aspirated V8 as its base. But with the need to add almost 200 horsepower for GTP, Porsche upstroked that motor to 4.6 liters and turbocharged the engine. Three of the four GTP models are turbocharged, but only the 963 has a hot V setup with the engine's air intakes placed where the exhausts would normally be found and its exhausts moved to the top of the motor where the dual turbos are mounted. As a result of this tight packaging, the Porsche's intake plenums are hidden out of sight beneath the heads and the exhaust manifolds that spin the turbos are super short which provide faster spooling and faster power delivery on the way to its 8,158 RPM redline. The exhaust outlets, which fit through the engine cover, also rank as the shortest in GTP. Behind the internal combustion engine and atop the Bosch motor generator unit, the only conventional area of the 963 is seen with the pushrod rear suspension and its third damper slash heave spring connected to a T-bar anti-roll bar. The Porsche's cutting edge front suspension, that's a different matter, which we'll discuss in a separate video. We'll finish our fourth and final GTP car tech tour with a deeper dive into the Porsche's glowing bodywork. More of the unique choices that separate it from its rivals. Let's start with the smart approach seen with the mandatory openings above the 963's four wheel wells. The rules require every GTP car to open the tops of the fenders to relieve pressure, which helps to stabilize the cars in the event of a spin or a possible flip. And according to those rules, those openings must meet the same volume, the same measurement, but there's no template that says the openings have to be large squares or rectangles as seen here on the BMW. So with the need to meet the minimum area requirement in the rule book, but no specific guidelines on the shape, Porsche met the challenge by trading big fender openings where the rotating tires meet plenty of air and create turbulence for long, narrow channels that cover more of the 963's tires with that bodywork. It's a brilliant solution, complies with the rules while creating a more slippery road for air to travel over the fenders. And with that minimum dimensional opening to meet at all four corners to satisfy IMSA's GTP technical inspection team, Porsche carved five small slots on the insides of those skinny channels to save from adding that volume to the channels themselves. It's little details like these that make each GTP model so much fun to review. On the extended list of Porsche-only design features, the 963 has vertical fins atop the roof keep the air channeled in the directions it wants over the back of the car. Turning to the tail of the Porsche, the brand's dedication to low drag aerodynamics stands out, the absence of tall gurney flaps, the trailing edge of the bodywork. You'll also find the only use of actual road car badging in GTP with Porsche lettering blocks spelled out across the rear substructure. Step back and look into the fairings behind the rear tires and the same absence of flicks and interruptions deployed on other GTP models. Here's a glance at how Acura fills in its space. Speaks to the 963's commitment to smooth airflow throughout the car. And lastly, Porsche's diffuser choices fall in line with BMW and Cadillac with two short and recessed strakes. Only Acura went for the all dressed design with those four full length strakes to concentrate the air and make more downforce as it leaves the bottom of the car. 
The Porsche 963 is a delight to behold. Its shape is beautiful. Its engine is retro modern. Its suspension is half inspired by Formula One. And it produces a memorable sound, just like every factory Porsche prototype should. It's a new era of sports car racing in North America, and naturally, Porsche is here to play. Thanks for watching, and visit racer.com for more videos and stories about IMSA's exciting new hybrid GTP cars.